We watched WWE Survivor Series 2022, November 26th, 2022. A very good show on the whole. Hey, Randy mm-hmm. wants to know, Vinny, if you're looking forward to the XFL. Uh, or the you're f- not going to bother. Uh, the short answer is yes. It was fun last time for the half a season we got. I'm excited to see what the if the if the Seattle Sea Dragons can build the foundation that the Seattle Dragons started. Mm. Yeah, that's, they changed the name. They put the word "sea" in there. Apparently, someone pulled out a map and said, "Oh, look, they're, 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 they're the ocean over here. We should put C in the name, Sea Dragons." No, oh, that kind of C. I thought you meant like the letter C, like they're the Sea Dragons. That sounds like a very uh, like a, like a Dragon Gate faction. Well, you could uh, you could you could uh, argue about sounds what like the C stands for. You don't tell anybody what the C stands for, so then it could be like uh, Cock Dragons or, you know, whatever. And there it is. I mean, there could be others. Don't get me wrong. Anyway, should we do this? We so should do this. So, uh, the show opened with a cool video montage and music video with uh, Black Sabbath doing War Pigs. Nazi was actually there. I'm convinced that half of the reason Hunter still does premium live events is just to uh, bust out his favorite old vinyl records and put them on the, the TV here. The Chop Dragons. It opens with a women's war games match. Now, I watched the pay-per-views only. I haven't watched a hardly watched a main roster WWE show in years. So this felt to me, as these women came out, like they took the entire women's roster, put them in a jar, shook them out, and ducked them out of the table. And like whoever ended up on this side is on one team, and whoever ended up on the other side is the other. And it didn't help that there was... It's a team event here. There was no color coordination, no uniforms, unlike the main event, the, the men's match. The men's it's match okay. Was, Th- there's nothing wrong with that, Benny. Well, Vinny, I yeah, mean, I've, this is the, clearly you have not been watching the main no. roster because they did not mix and match a bunch of uh, these are these are very clearly feuding uh, factions. Okay. The only difference is that uh, Becky Becky literally left the day that uh, the damage control showed up, so she has not really been feuding with them, but uh, she got injured at SummerSlam when she was wrestling Bianca. She managed yes. to finish the match. And then the storyline they gave was that damage control made it worse. I see. So when she showed up as a mystery opponent, you know, they can they can fool you into thinking this was the plan all along. But uh, what actually happened was they just needed an excuse to get Becky out of there. And that's how it all worked out. Well, last time I saw Becky, she was having a match with Bianca Belair against each other, not, not teams. Uh, last I saw Alexa Bliss, I think she was still in some variant of Bray Wyattness. Yep. Uh, last time I saw Mia Yim, she was uh, in in uh, whatever the hell that uh, uh, anarchy group was, the uh, protesting group, whatever the, the hell their name was. And uh, last time I saw Asuka, actually it was on a, a, a Twitter clip where she and Eo Sky, Sky, Eo Sky were having an awesome verbal battle in Japanese. I didn't understand. One word of it was great. So anyway... We open with Bianca Belair versus Dakota Kai. Back off that mic a tad and continue on. We open with Bianca Belair and Dakota Kai. We are told if you escape the cage, you will forfeit the match for your entire team. And I wrote this down and emphasized it because I was certain that if one of these two matches, some bozo was going to get out of the cage, they would ignore this rule. But no, it never happened. (laughs) You know what's funny about that rule is how stupid it is. So you're telling me that if if I'm doing a five-on-five match... And it's me and Vinny and Craig and Sonny O'Mara and Nate. And we're all in a cage together. If I leave, thus putting you four at a massive disadvantage, the match is just over? Yeah. I mean, I should be able to run away if I want. Well, no, you should not. It's a cage match. You should not be able to run out of a cage match. Well, I mean, you shouldn't be able to, but if there's no roof on it, and I'm a coward, I guess you could say that's surrendering if you just flee. Sure. I guess maybe that's that's an explanation for it, but uh, it's kind of a weird rule. You cannot cannot just leave. Your whole team will lose. Uh, Bianca Belair always been a great athlete in better shape than she's ever been here. Very, very lean. Uh, Corey Graves with some sage advice for all you uh, potential pro pro wrestlers out there. Keep yourself as far away from impact as you can, he says. Hmm. And I don't know if he meant it the way I took it, but I took it that that way. 
So they had a five minute period here. And uh, the one thing about this match, it, it, we'll get to the, the big picture stuff at the end, but they did a great job of sticking to the War Games formula. The best in years that I have seen sticking to the War Games formula. They tried sometimes in XT, they never quite got it right. They tried sometimes in uh, uh, TNA and butchered it, just butchered it to death. Uh, I think Blood and Guts have been okay doing this, but these th th this match stuck to the formula of the good guys win for five minutes, or at least are winning at the end of five minutes, and then every time somebody new hits the cage, the momentum changes. It was a very simple formula, but if you do it right, it works every time. Well, you're right, but they also they managed to... They, they didn't fuck it up, but I did find it funny where you had a women's war games where the heels had the advantage... And then you had a men's war games where the baby faces had the advantage, okay? So clearly they fucked up the main event by giving the baby faces the advantage, as we'll get mm -hmm. to. But in the in the women's war games, what was funny about it was they gave the heels the advantage. But if you watch the match, they also gave the heels everything the fans wanted to see. Yes, that is So, like, happen. Nikki Cross Until is a the heel, end, but, yes, yes. but she does the big dive off the cage, and everybody pops. They go crazy because she did something off the cage. Io Shirai is a heel. She does a moonsault off the cage. They all pop like crazy because she did something off the cage. Nikki's the first person in the cage. She grabs weapons. Everybody pops, and she throws the weapons in the ring. And then the next person to throw stuff into the ring is Bailey, also a heel. She throws shit in the ring, and everybody cheers. And I thought... You know, you 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 had it right, and you still managed to do it wrong. It was not perfect. Throw have the baby faces throw the shit into the ring. The fans are fucking chanting, "We want tables," and then they trot out Bailey to bring tables into the ring. I was like, "Why did you?" Ah, fuck it. Who cares? It was funny that they fucked that up. It, it was not perfect. They could have done it better. So, uh, Bianca spends the last 30 seconds or so here just eviscerating Dakota Kai, who took a thorough beating this match from start to finish. Uh, Eos Kai comes in for the heels, for the, to make the save, make it two on one. Now, three minutes for these uh, interim periods here, that's just too long. Because by definition, you don't want the heels doing cool stuff, aside from throwing weapons into the ring, which is the most they did. So... They're they're in there doing very basic things most of the time, but it's then it's three minutes of basic things, and it's, it overstays its welcome. Well, it's not only that, but how long can you do a comeback before you also, lose the crowd? Also true. It's way better with two-minute intervals yeah. because, first off, it takes you a good 30 seconds to get to the ring. You get in the ring, you got 90 seconds to fucking run wild, and then here comes a heel— the heel yeah. takes 30 seconds to get to the ring. Now you only have to do heat for 90 seconds. Just beat down these baby faces for 90 seconds. The people are excited. Here comes another baby face. When you do three minutes, you know, what happens every time is, you know, you're you're beating on the baby face. The crowd starts to get bored. So now the baby face starts making a comeback. Then you beat him down again. Now here comes another baby face. That baby face runs wild for a while. Then you cut them off. And then they have to run wild again because now a heel has to come down. It's too long. It, yes. it makes it harder to have good drama and excitement. Yes. yes. Over, each segment over says is welcome. Uh, Asuka comes down to even the odds, make it two on two. I did like for the most part they were running to the ring as fast as they could. And it's mostly Asuka beating at both the heels by herself for three minutes. Uh, Bianca did recover to press Dakota around, throw it into the cage, and beat her ass some more. Nikki Cross makes it three on two. Spends the vast majority of her time throwing weapons into the ring. The crowd is just demanding tables because wrestling fans are dumb. I would much rather go through a table than be hit with a stick or be hit with a trash can or be hit with a trash can than any of this stuff. The, the, the tables are the softest part of this entire... The, all those, all this plunder, the tables are the softest part. So uh, her entire... When she's actually doing stuff, it's all just hitting people with weapons. Alexa Bliss is the next uh, baby face. She comes in to make the save, make it three on three. She is charging down the aisle. She is nearly decapitated by a camera cord hanging above the ring. Stops at the last second to duck under it, throw it down, shoot the cameraman and look like, <laughs> like, like he nearly killed her. And then make a great recovery. Just get back in the ring and do her job. Made a hell of a comeback, actually. Uh, everyone's hitting each other with sticks for a while. Nikki Cross is just chilling up on the top rope. Finally dives onto everyone at the perfect time because everyone is down for the last 20 seconds until Bailey comes in to make it four on three, gets a couple ladders. I would definitely rather go through a table than get hit with one of these ladders, that's for sure, or go on one of these ladders. Uh, 
Just random stuff other than the plunder getting thrown in. But again, it's the heels. It's not supposed to be exciting. It's supposed to be fun when the baby bases run in. So Mia Yim makes it four on four. She's also grabbing plunder. At this point, it occurred to me, why did he even bother sticking this stuff under the ring? There should just be a pile of plunder in the aisle, and as you run down the aisle, grab a weapon, hit the ring, and go. That's just be fun. Leave the lockdown, baby. Just lower that lid with all that shit and let him go did, to town. They did that there. They did that there, too. Yes. Wacky convoluted spot where all eight women are fighting atop four separate turnbuckles leading to four separate superplexes, but it was cool, and they tried something different, and everyone is down as Rhea Ripley makes it five on four. Complete destruction. She's the biggest, strongest, scariest person on the heel team, destroying everyone. It's it, it, the, the heels here are so dominant that Nikki spends the entire period just sitting on the top rope laughing like the Cheshire Cat. And uh, Mia makes a brief comeback, but then she gets trash canned to death until Becky Lynch comes, th- he makes, uh, comes in the ring, makes a five on five. The match beyond officially begins. No, and no. War games. Well, if war the original, games. the original Dusty Rhodes version. I know, but it was war games now, and then the match beyond. Now it is war games begins. 30 minutes into yes. this match. Yes. That's a long time. And then they went for a lot of stuff. Now. Uh, I kind of, I understand why they want to do pinfalls and submissions as finishes, and that's not a huge deal, but we're doing war games, and I'm watching people do, like, schoolboys and cradles. Eh, this is not in the spirit of war games. This is eh, it's too, uh, it's too athletic, athletically competitive for well, perhaps games of war. Perhaps you've never heard of the art of war, Vinny. The artistry of a cradle in a war. Interesting. Yes. Perhaps I missed that chapter in Sun Tzu. Uh, let's see. Rhea Ripley gets misted by uh, Asuka. Uh, there's a lot of spots where it's three or four people doing a, a spot, and then the other seven, eight, whatever it is, just lay in there doing nothing. Nothing, nothing on it for a while. I loved when they teased a nine-person Tower of Doom. Yes. And Bianca's at the bottom, and she's going to powerbomb eight other people down to the mat. And then whoever the 10th person was, I think it was Nikki. Nikki hits Bianca in the guts with a stick. Bianca falls down. And everyone just takes turns climbing or falling off the cage one by one. I did like the idea that, you know, it'd be too ridiculous for her to uh, to hit nine <laughs> people with a stacked up superplex. So let's just do something also ridiculous. Which is we're all going to fall off this fucking rope together. So let's see. Uh, I did find myself asking why the heels were hitting all the big spots. Uh, Nikki and Alexa go into a trash can. They're out of the match. Rhea puts Mia through a ladder. They're both out of the match. I don't, I don't know what happened to Asuka. She disappeared at the finish of this match. I, I have no idea what happened. But it's Bianca and Bailey versus Damage Control 3 on 2. And uh, they did a cute spot where Bianca misses her finish, but Becky hits hers, and then vice versa. And then for the big finish, I will give them credit for this. Uh, after all this to- uh, the, the past half hour of the heels doing most of the cool stuff, what was coolest to these fans with this table and coming off that cage. And so Bianca and Bailey are the ones in the end who put the heels on the table. Becky's the one who goes at the top of the cage, does a leg drop sent on thing through multiple people through the table, ends up pinning Dakota Kai. They did a great job of following the formula. Everyone had a chance to look good. And in the end, it was the baby faces getting the biggest pop of the match for the biggest spot in the match and immediately winning. So I gave a huge thumbs up to the Women's War Games match. Really? I gave this a thumbs in the middle. And uh, I actually, when it was over, I thought, I don't know if I'm getting old or what, but I'm, I'm just feeling like I should throw them something. Because this match, I mean, they worked very hard. And they did a lot of crazy stuff. And they tried. But at the end of the day, all I could think watching this match is, what in God's name is the story of this match? The story of this match is we're doing a lot of stuff. That was the story. And, like, some of this stuff looked bad. EO Sky had a horrible night. She botched one thing after another early. And then, at the end, you know, Becky does what really, you know, I, I got kids. They go to those jumpy houses. This looked like something you do in a jumpy house. She jumped off something and sat on two people. And, uh, and then got the win. And it was over, and I thought, okay, hold on a second. Uh, th- both this and the main event. What did we accomplish here? Becky won. Right. So do we have a challenger for Bianca Belair? Are these two baby faces going to... Re- we just saw it at SummerSlam with a finish. 
I mean, what was the point of this? And then, you know, you could argue, well, damage control injured Becky, and so she got her revenge. Well, technically, that's true. But after they wrote Becky out, right after SummerSlam, we never heard about her again. Literally, the storyline was, the day before the show, we're going to announce our mystery fifth woman. And the mystery fifth woman was Becky. So it wasn't even like this storyline, like, can she fight her way back and get revenge on damage control? It was like, we got a surprise. It's Becky. And then she does her jump off the bouncy house and she wins. And I'm like, okay, well, we, we settled nothing here. We have no challenger for Bianca. You know, they all did a lot of stuff, but it never felt like a war. It didn't feel like a war between two factions. It felt like exactly what I was told it was in some ways, which was we need footage for the next video package of people on the main roster having war games. So we got to do a bunch of crazy stuff. So the next time we do a video package for war games, it's not all footage from NXT. That's what this match was. So I am I am uh, I'm giving it a thumbs in the middle because I'm in a good mood. But a lot of people gave it a thumbs down. I do know that. Really? Yeah. Uh I don't know why, but the internet was buzzing because Rhea Ripley was doing pull-ups in the little cage. Well, she's all over. Well, they've never yeah. exercised before. I you don't I think don't Rhea know. Ripley can do a fucking pull-up? I believe she can, and I witnessed it with my own eyes. I did not think go to Twitter and report on it, though. A lot of people did. Um, the uh, the build-up to the match beyond that we're not calling the match beyond um, was fine. I liked uh, EO and um and uh Asuka in there together for the brief minute and a half that was great. Um uh, poor Dakota Kai uh leapt off the uh top rope. She was going to double foot stomp Mia Yim who was draped over the middle ropes. She did so but then made the landing on her knees on the diamond plating metal mm. that mm. held the two rings together. That looked like it sucked. Um, I thought this was, I thought this was a thumbs up and I actually thought it was better than the main event. So there you go. Well, we're all here to disagree. Clearly. Okay. I did not think this was better than the main event. I also like, by the way, they gave the, the winning team plenty of time to celebrate and let it sink in. This is a big triumph. And I don't think it was, on, nothing was on the line. I don't know where we go from here, but damn it. Winning this was important to them and they, they got to celebrate the win and that made it important. By the way, Brian is, uh, is Bailey okay? Did she get hurt? This well, match? Uh, she may have gotten hurt in this match because uh, there was there there was a moment where uh, EO did a moonsault and yes. uh, she was caught. I forget Bianca and somebody else caught her, but I remember Bianca because Bianca immediately went down and grabbed her ankle mm -hmm. and then didn't get up for like literally about three or four minutes. And I thought she was done. And then she eventually got up and did a bunch of stuff. But then Bailey also uh, took a bump. And you could see, like, the ref was, you know, he's got some yeah. gimmick. I don't even know how the gimmick works, but he's, he messes with his belt when he's communicating. And uh, him and the doctor were talking for a while. And apparently it was determined that everybody was okay to continue. But I think uh, Bailey on her Instagram may have been uh, teasing that she was hurt. And, it, and if she did, it's probably true. Because okay. I'd heard that Bailey and Bianca were the ones that people were worried about. But I, I didn't get any confirmation or anything like that, but I did hear that. Okay. Granny, let's do the wrestling report. What do you got today? Put your laughing gear on. <laughs> My laughing gear. <laughs> <laughs> what is uh, wrestle uh, load? <laughs> <laughs> and Brian Hawks. <laughs> I, I don't. That's what Vinny got paid after his show. I don't. I don't know what wrestle load is. <laughs> oh wait a minute! It's wrestle Cade. Oh, oh well, that good. makes more sense. Where would Brian go? <laughs> he's recuperating. He's he's broken. You broke him, Granny. <laughs> Sheesh! I have right. never. I have. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. 
Don't miss out. Join us today.